the next condition we're looking at is trigger finger or trigger thumb. Um, if I can actually just turn, turn your palms up. Trigger finger or trigger thumb is where the flexor tendon, so FPL or the long flex of the fingers, gets tethered in the A1 pulley. The A1 pulley is the first annular or tunnel shaped pulley of the flexor sheath of the flexor tendons. And this again, like the Quirmacine standarditis, isn't really an itis or inflammation. It also has myxoid degeneration, so scarring or thickening of the um, synovium over the tendon and over the pulley. The patients usually complain of pain around this area, which I'll look at more detail in a second. They complain of locking, which sometimes is just in the morning, so their finger is stuck into flexion in the morning. Or it can be more consistent during the day, and especially when gripping tightly. Uh, the scale usually is that patients have a little bit of pain, or it starts to lock and they can flick it open themselves, hence the trigger name. Or it starts to lock and they have to use their other hand to, to straighten it. Or it's locked and they can't straighten it at all due to the pain. Interestingly, because if it becomes a recurrent problem, the extensor tendon is having to make a big effort to straighten the finger. Patients sometimes come and complain of pain over the PIPJs or the IPJ due to some inflammation of the tendons having to work harder to straighten the fingers that keep on catching. On examination, the look, there's usually not much to see unless the patient happens to be in the locked position, then they're usually fairly straight. They can be slightly flexed and the cascade might be slightly out if they have pain and they're wanting to hold their fingers slightly more flexed, but usually there's not very much to see. You can see some hypopigmentation and, and fat atrophy if they've had multiple injections. And if you were looking for scars from previous surgeries, then they'd usually be around the A1 pulley region. So this is usually a line from the distal palmar crease to the proximal palmar crease cutting across. And your scar would either be a small transverse scar in line with the fingers or a small V to get better access. And be aware that for your middle and ring finger, they go fairly straight, the tendons down into the carpal tunnel, but your little and index finger tend to converge, so the incisions may be slightly off center of the fingers. Um, for feeling, again, you need to know with that anatomy because mostly patients have some tenderness over the A1 pulley, and it's easiest to feel on yourself to feel what is normal. So again, ask the patient if their, thumb, uh, their finger is painful, and if you press over the A1 pulley and ask them to make a fist, you can feel the nodule moving and you can feel it in normal patients. Probably on yourself, it's most obvious on the middle finger. And if you grip fairly tightly, then it, the tendon does lift up so it's more palpable. So you do want to compare to the other fingers if they're painful over the A1 pulley and also to the other hand and how palpable it is. And just highlight over the thumb, the A1 pulley is around the MCPJ crease here. And therefore your incisions and your pain will all be around this region. From a movement point of view as well, you sometimes have a slight lag due to pain. So as mentioned, the finger might be slightly flexed forward and you might have to gently press on it to extend it and they will elicit pain in this region over the A1 pulley. There's no real special tests for trigger finger and, and that is a simple examination and a diagnosis. Thank you.